Good morning, Fellowship Sunday School class. I'm glad to be with you today. I'm hoping you all are well and staying safe and keeping yourself away from that old coronavirus. Hope everybody's doing well and keeping strong and doing everything that they need to do to do the right things. Our lesson today comes from the book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 6 through 16. The entitlement of our, our title of our lesson is called Relational Investment. Let's open with prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every blessing you provided to us. Thank you, Father, for loving us and caring for us and providing our needs, Father. We pray, Father, for our class. Just be with each class member and keep them safe and keep them strong, Father. Just open our hearts today, Father, as we go into your lesson today, the lesson you've given us to teach today, Father, that we might be receptive to the words that are being presented and we might get a greater understanding of who, what, what this book is all about and the things it's trying to teach us, Father. We ask, Father, for your strength and understanding that you'll just guide each of and every one of us to do the things that you call us to do, that we'll be the witness you call us to be in everything that we say and do. We love you, Father, and thank you, Father, most of all for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross of Calvary for our sins, who rose from that tomb on the third day, who now sits at your right hand, Father, making intercessions for us, those of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. One thing I want to bring to your attention this morning, uh, if you would like a, to have a copy of the quarterly for next quarter, our fall quarter, there's copies of it in the fellowship, I mean, excuse me, in the uh, lobby of the church, in the window of the office there. It's got uh, our class name on top of them. I think there's several copies left in there if you want to pick up one next time you're at the church. They'll be there for a while until they run out. And then if anybody needs one that didn't get one, just let me know. I'll make arrangements to get you a copy also. So if you want a copy of our le the next quarter's lesson, which comes out of the book of Isaiah, just be go, go by the church and pick up one there in the lobby in the window of, of the office. Let's move on to our lesson this morning now. This morning our scriptures come from Solomon's uh, book, Song of Solomon, chapter 5, starting at verse 6 to verse 16. Our scripture opens up with the Shulamite girl speaking. It says, I opened for my beloved, but he, but my beloved had turned away and gone. My heart yearned, leaped up from, excuse me, my heart leaped up when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. Verse 7 says, the watchman who went about the city found me. They struck me, they wounded me, the keepers of the walls, they took my veil away from me. Verse 8, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him, I am lovesick. Now the daughters of Jerusalem responding to her, what is your beloved? More, what, is your beloved more than another beloved? Or fairest among women? First of all, who is your beloved? More than another beloved that you so charge us? The Shulamite speaking again. My beloved is mine, is, is, is white and ruddy, chief among the th ten thousands. His head is like the finest gold. His locks are wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the rivers of waters washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bed of, of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dripping liquid mirth. His hands are like rods of, of gold, set, in a, in a, in bur, set with beryl. His body is carved ivory, inlaid with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble, set on bases of fine gold. His countenance is like Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet. Yes, his, his, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Zion, daughters of Jerusalem. Like I said, our lesson today is entitled Relational Investment. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 6 to 16. 
let's look at a little bit of an introduction of our study today. Christ in the in the scriptures. That's one thing we look look at here in these in the scriptures today that we're looking at this in the book of Solomon. We think Christ is not in the Old Testament, but Christ is represented in many ways in the Old Testament by the representation of the poetry that's written here in the Song of Solomon and other places, also in the book of Proverbs and the book of uh, Psalms. We find his him in many places in different ways. Just as some of the Psalms have a uh, comment commentary application as well as a uh, future oriented, oriented one so the entire song of Solomon has several levels of fulfill, fulfillment the encounters and aff aff affliction, affectionate exchanges between Solomon and his bride are passionate poetry documenting human love but the king also uh, illustrates God's love for the people of God over whom he rules as, and Solomon, uh, and Solomon's or, ornamental language also prefi pre prefigures the delight, delight, and the joy Jesus has for the for his his bride and his unconditional commitment to his church. In the New Testament, the followers of Jesus are seen as the personified object of his love. This can be seen in the following scriptures in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 11 verse 2 in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 23 through 25 in the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 through 9 and verse 20 and chapter 21 verse 9 the song of Solomon celebrates the beauty and intimacy of marriage of married love in a narrative poem it teaches that a lasting marriage requires dedication commitment and strong love loyalty between husband and wife. The song also presents an idealized picture of how human love can be expressed under God's blessing. This is a very important issue. Some critics have claimed that Christianity sta standards for marriage ignore or under undervaluate sexual relationships. But the Song of Solomon refutes this. It re reiterates the biblical admonitions against sexual outside sex outside the marriage, but it also affirms that God not only approves of, but also encourages sexual pleasures within marriage. This is the fifth song found in the Song of Solomon. In this love story, King Solomon has brought a humble Shulamite girl from the hill country of Ephraim to the palace in Jerusalem. In these songs, the bride reveals how impressed she is by everything there. Everything there, The palace, the throne, the banquet tables of the king. Her song includes her worship and adoration of the king. Today, there are a great many Christians who have, who have done one or two things. They have grieved the spirit by sin in their lives, or they have just quenched the whole quenched the spirit by the being obedient, obedient to him by not being obedient to him. These break fellowship with him and cause us to lose our joy. It does not mean that we lose our salvation, but we will surely lose the joy of our salvation. It does not mean that we have lost the Holy Spirit. He still dwells in the believer. We can grieve him, but we cannot grieve him away. However, we certainly can lose fellowship with him, and many Christians are in that position today. The bride here has lost her fellowship with the groom in our study today. If we are not doing something for the Lord, we haven't if we are not doing something for the Lord, we haven't lost our salvation, but we surely are missing sweet fellowship with Him. While doing visitation, do you realize how impotent and powerless we are if we attempt to go out on our own and leave the Lord behind? We may go out with a great deal of zeal and enthusiasm, but, but enthusiasm will never replace fellowship with the Lord. Can you describe a time when you had to work, had to work hard 
to get better at something you were trying to do. You know, a lot of us today in our marriages are to try, try harder to do better with our marriages sometimes. We see a lot of things going on in society around us, how people are losing their faith in, in the Lord Jesus Christ and turning away from the wives and the husbands and starting out on their own because they can't get things the way they want to be. They need to get closer to God and get a greater understanding how God has brought about the relationship of marriage in our, in our humanity today. Just like a hobby or skill, relationships require reinvestment. The investment must be spending time with the Lord Jesus Christ, getting to know Him better, as well our relationship to grow we must put the needs of others first, investing time and energy in every situation. Our first session for our lesson today is the cry for companionship. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Solomon depicted the new bride as needing emotional support for her husband. She called out to others for assistance, but was not but was not but only met with abuse but when he came to arouse her to come with him as he was out doing the work as a shepherd looking for lost sheep that were lost he didn't want to get out she didn't want to get out of bed and when she finally did go to the door he was gone she opened the door and called to him then she went out to look for him first let's start our verses there in verse 1, I opened my open for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and was gone. My heart leaped when I, he spoke. I sought him, but could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. Verse 7, the watchmen who went back, who went about the city, found me. They struck me. They wounded me. They, the keepers of the wall took my veil from away from me. You know, in this these verses here, the girl was also outside doing some during the, during the night, and in the Old Testament time, she would have been looked upon as a criminal or a prostitute and treated in such a way as she was treated here. Quite possibly, the watchman and the wall, man of uh, man of the wall also thought she might be in that situation. This um, this image symp sympathizes the pain she felt but being separated from her lover. The watchmen that went about the city found me, but and they smote me. This girl is having a difficult time. She is being hurt by those who should have been uh, protecting her. This same situation occurs in Christian circles today. As, as was mentioned earlier, do you realize how imp impotent and powerless we are if we attempt to go out on our own and that's what she was doing here trying to go out on her own looking for her lover we may go out with a great deal of enthusiasm but enthusiasm will never replace fellowship with the lord and here she had lost fellowship with her with her husband the man there can be no be a lot of enthusiasm for knocking on doors and a witness to the people but without the right attitude we will not be able to to gain any ground without the Lord's help. Verse 8 says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him, I am lovesick. Her heart was sick, and her whole being is yearning for him. The garden had lost its fragrance. The mirth and the frankincense didn't mean much to her. Now and the beauty of the flowers had faded had withered. How can re miscommunication lead to conflict in a marriage? As, mo as most of us can, who are married can attest to, if our communication is not understood, both parties, stood by both parties, our relationship becomes very strained to test, to say the least. At the last minute, she had a change of heart and goes out, goes to open the door for him. But by the time she opens the door, he has gone. Remember that they, these verses aren't re retelling an actual event, but are poetry filled with metaphor. The focus is on feelings and emotions. One interpretation of verse 7 is that it 
reflects how the bride feels regret, feels regret and shame at her earlier actions. Another is that in verse 7 shows the bride seeking support from others, uh, from others in the community, and they mock her instead of helping. What type of support do husbands and wives need from in marriage? How can satis selfishness impact the, the relationship? Men and women often desire different types of support and love, and this and this will uh, will vary even from one man from one man to the next, or from one woman to the next. Nevertheless, husbands and wives need emotional and moral support. Christ also provides a per per perfect example of selfless love, and we're and we're called to imitate Him in our relationships. Second session of our lesson today is the call for remembering. Sol Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 9. Solomon wrote of a response by the young woman that challenged the bride, of, bride to remember why she was attracted to her husband in the first place. What is your beloved? What? Is your love more, uh, th more than another beloved? O fairest among women, what is your what is your beloved more than an, another beloved that you so uh, charge us? How can these young women encourage the bride in her marriage? How can this provide an example for us to encourage others believers in their marriages? Selfishness and pride can take us can take t take keep us focused on on present hurts or dis disappointments. Humility helps us recognize our own imperfections and focus on the good things others have done in the past. How can we remain each other, remind each other of God's faithfulness in the past in order to stay committed to God in the present? We shouldn't dismiss current pa pains, st struggles, or disappointments. However, by sharing stories of God's goodness, we can remind each other that God is always faithful. The third section of our study today is the crux of celebrating, for celebrating. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 10 through 16. Solomon told, the bride, uh, told of the bride's accounting the uh, admir uh, admirable characteristics of, her, of the husband. In so doing, the bride is seen as Re reaffirming her love for her husband. The bride responds to the questions of the, in verse 9 with a poem extolling the handsomeness of her husband be be beginning with his ruddy complexion and ending with his sweetness of his mouth. Verse 10 says, My love is white and ruddy chief among the ten thousands. I mean, she put him in above all other people around him. Chief among ten thousand. He is the most beautiful. He is the most caring and most loving of any man. His head is like the finest gold. He, his locks are wavy and black as a raven. Pointing out the, the color of his hair. And if his head, head, head is like finest gold. That means his face has a complexion of gold. He's more powerful and more, more important and more richer than any gold that it ever could be. Verse 12, his eyes are like doves by the dry rivers of the waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His eyes, his face is clear. His eyes are clear and ready for, and can see what's going on around him. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks on the scented herb, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dipping liquid mirth, dripping liquid mirth. His hands are rods of gold, Set in barrel. In other words, he has good, firm hands, strong hands, and, and, and beautiful hands. His body is carved ivory, inlaid with sapphires. That, that, what that means, his body is well, well formed, or or has strong strength of, 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 of designs to it and all. We don't know, but we know it. Talking about a fine body and carved in ivory. His legs are pillars of marble, set on bases of fine gold. Pillars of marble represent strength, strong legs. His countenance is like Lebanon, 
excellent as the cedars. Now the cedars of Exxon were one of the, one of the greatest trees around in, in the time of Israel. It was used in a lot of building programs and stuff like that where the, the cedar is a long living tree and also it also it has a long life, does not decay. So he was, has, was considered as a strong man. Verse 16 says, His mouth is most sweet. Yet, yet he, yet, yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. The girl calls Solomon here her friend in this last verse. In a healthy marriage, lovers are also good friends. Too often people are driven into marriage by the exciting feelings of love and passion before they take time to learn or become a, develop an understanding or develop a friendship with each other. This involves listening, sharing, and showing understanding for the other's likes or dislikes. Friendship takes time, but it makes a love relationship much deeper and far more satisfying. Based on her description, what are some characteristics the wife values? Remember these there, these aren't literal descriptions. These verses explain how the bride feels about her husband. For example, the status-like status description in verse 15 emphasizes the husband's nobility. Why is, the interp why is it important for spouses to verbalize their feelings? In celebrating her husband, the wife continues to remind herself of her own feelings for him. And her love for and her love grew by recounting these characteristics to the young women. The wife no boldly praised her husband in public. It is important to build each other up in public and never tear one another down in the, for, for in front of others. If we look at Ephesians chapter five verse thirty three, we'll get a greater understanding of what's being said here. It says, nevertheless, let each one of you in particular. So love his own wife as himself, and let, his, and his, let the wife see that the, he, the, she respects her husband. How do we celebrate God in private and in public? How does public worship encourage us to encourage us and others? God doesn't need our praise, but, but the Bible tells us to praise him though. Just as the bride in, Sol in Song of Solomon reminded her, the bride in Song of Solomon reminded herself of her husband's att attributes when she encountered them, recounted them to the others. She reminded her, she reminded we remind ourselves and others of our of God's goodness with when we praise Him. In conclusion of our lesson today. That how can we apply the truth of this study about ever investing our marriage relationships to our to our relationships with God? Relationships are important and require selfless investments in in order to to flourish. The most important relationship we have in our relationship in our relationships is with God. Our relationship with God doesn't completely mirror in any earthly relationship. God is already perfect and complete. However, God invites us into relationship with Him. We know we should no, we should be quick to answer when we when He knocks and know that if we seek Him, He will find we will find Him. Just as a couple must invest in their relationship, believers must also invest in their relationship with God. First of all, our first session today is God's marriages, godly marriages should be characterized by mutual, moral, and emotional support. Second part of our lesson today was godly marriages are founded on a commitment to remain faithful to each other throughout life. And the third portion of our lesson today is the godly marriage includes mutual affection on one's, of one's spouse. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every blessing you provided to us. Thank you, Father, for the time we've had together to study your word. We just pray, Father, you'll take what we've given here today and then you'll apply it to our hearts. 
will be able to take it and use it in a way that would be pleasing to you, that you would be glorified. We pray, Father, those who have heard the lesson today, have heard it rightly, and that if there is a mistake there somewhere in their mind, we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will work with them and work with us to help us, Father, to greater understand what you want for us to do and what you want us to say and how you want us to say things, Father. We love you and thank you, Father, for every blessing you give us. Bless our class. Bless each member of our, our class, Father. Be at the Trinity Baptist Church and can you bless the strength of it. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me remind you again, next week we begin a study from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 10 through 20. If you want a quarterly, it is on the windowsill of the office in the lobby of the church. So don't forget to pick up one if you want one. And if you get there's not one there, give me a call and I'll see if I can get others for you. Thank you for listening and have a good day.